Hey y'all, thank you for connecting to um, me today. Um, connecting to me or connecting with me. <laughs> um, so I have some prophetic words that I need to give out to you all today. Um, I got, I think I got two of them yesterday and then I got some more this, this morning um, at about half three or so in the morning while I was spending time in the presence of the Lord. Um, so he has asked me to come here and let the world know and just, just to let you all know, okay, um, what he wants me to let you know. Um, if you study the Bible, you probably would know or hear something familiar with regards to what I'm going to be saying because a lot of it is actually from the Bible, some prophecies that were you know, um, talks about in, in the Bible. Um, and then, so, and then some, he actually gave them directly to me, but then the other ones, he pointed my direction towards them, um, and told me to let, you know, everyone know about this. Um, yeah. So the, I have my notes in front of me, um, <laughs> uh, where I put down everything my, my father tells me, um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to go into it and just some things, I think about two of them are for um, believers that are already in Christ. Not just two words, like like two phrases, but um, just like something to say to you all, to, to to us that are in Christ. And then for people of the world, he's, he's also given me quite a few um, things to, to say um, with regards to what's going on and... COVID-19 and yeah. So um, I'm, I've, I've already prayed and I'm going to just, just, just say another short prayer again while I'm here, really. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless you, Heavenly Father. Let me speak the right words, your words, Heavenly Father, not my words, but your words, Heavenly Father. And let this word of God convict the heart of every person that will connect to this video, Lord, and every audience, Heavenly Father, and convert them, oh God, that they will believe in Jesus Christ, that they will turn from their old ways, of God, and turn to you in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Okay, hallelujah. So the first one um, is for believers in Christ. So God has said to me, um, yesterday, 8th of April, 2020, this was in the afternoon, not in the afternoon, sorry, this was in the morning at about 10.45 or so, he said, rivers are being made in the desert. Rivers are being made in the desert and a land of milk and honey my people will live in. Rivers are being made in the desert and a land a land of milk and honey my people will live in. So that is God's word for believers, every believer, everyone that is in Christ. That is what God told me to tell you. The rivers are being made in the desert and a land of milk and honey my people will live in. So this is just to encourage um, we that are in Christ to um, just be rest assured that God is with us. You know, he's he's working things out for our good and we must not be moved by what is currently going on in the world. Um, but he's, he, he's a way maker, God. He's making a way for us. Every single one of us, he's making a way for us. And at the end of it all, we are going to, you know, you know, end up living in a land that is flowing with milk and honey. There's a scripture that actually, uh, you know, mentions that. I'm not sure exactly where, but there's a scripture that actually mentions mentions that. Um, so that is the first word. And then I'm going to go on to, um, I have another one. Let me just try to find. Okay, so there's another one for believers again. And this one says, everywhere my people go, they will be blessed. Okay, so this is for believers. So if you're in Jesus Christ, this is for you. Everywhere my people go, they will be blessed. They should not fear, but continue to trust in me. I will uplift them. I will uplift them. Everywhere my people go, they will be blessed. 
Everywhere my people go, they will be blessed. Everywhere we go, we will be blessed. We will be blessed. Now and in the future, everywhere we go, we will be blessed. They should not fear, but trust, but continue to trust in me. They should not fear, but continue to trust in me. I will uplift them. There's a lot of believers that are living in fear because of what is currently happening um, because of this uh, virus thing that is that is going around. But God is saying that in your going out, in your coming in, you are blessed. Everywhere you go, you are blessed. If you need to go down the road to, to do shopping for the house, you are blessed. So stop worrying and stop living in fear. Okay, Stop being afraid of coronavirus. Stop being afraid of a virus and put your fear in the Lord. Okay. Put your fear in the Lord. That's who you need to be fearing, not a virus. And the same thing goes to every unbeliever as well that have not given, you know, their lives to Christ. Stop being afraid of a virus. Put your fear in God. Put your fear in God. To have fear for God is greater than to have fear for a virus or for a disease or a pandemic just put your fear in god because that's the beginning of wisdom okay fear god run away from sin run away from evil okay and run to him run away from the world and run to the word okay the word is jesus christ and he's the only one that can save you so Get out of the world and get into the world and get into Jesus and get into safety and get into peace and get into protection and get into his covering and get into his arms, okay, where he will keep you safe because that's the safest place on this earth is in the presence of God, in the arms of Jesus. Everything else I'm going to say now is going to be targeted instructions, prophetic words towards unbelievers. Now, I will punish the wicked. Tell them to turn from their ways. The time is short. I will come with a sword and with fire. I will punish the wicked. Tell them to turn from their ways. The time is short. I will come with a sword and with fire. This is, this is for everyone that is not in Christ. If you are not in Christ, this word is for you. You need to come to Christ. God will punish the wicked. God will punish the wicked. Even though you are somebody, okay, for example, you can say, oh, well, I'm living my life a normal way. I'm good to people. I'm kind and, and I'm, you know, peaceable and loving and everything. God does not see you as righteous, number one. He's, 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 he's actually seeing you as people that are part of a wicked generation because you're not transformed, because you're not saved, because you're not under Christ. And he wants you to be saved. He wants you to be a part of his family. So he's saying to me now, if you're not a part of his family, he's saying to you, tell the wicked, I will punish them. He will punish you. He will punish you if you don't turn to him. On that last day, eventually, you can all see, in fact, the punishment is already taking place here on earth. Earth is already burning. Earth is on fire already with all of these things going on around the world. Earth is already on fire. I will punish the wicked, tell them to turn from their ways. He wants you to turn. Turn. Turn from the world and turn to the world. Turn from the world and turn to Jesus. The time is short. I will come with a sword and with fire. God is going to destroy the earth with fire. And that sword is Jesus. Okay? So we need to turn. Everybody turn to Jesus. Because Jesus Christ is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. The true life. And the light of the world. So we need to turn to him. The time is short. He says the time is short. It is so short you have no idea how close we are. We are we are at the end of the age. This is the end of the age. This age is is coming to an end. It is it is like so like we are there right now. 
Now is the time more than ever to turn, turn to God. God exists. Do not be deceived. There is God and there is the devil. And God is stronger. He's realer, more powerful. He loves you. He exists. Don't, don't be deceived by the enemy to make you feel, make you believe that what culture has taught you or what you grew up knowing that God does not exist. He exists and he's real. The enemy is after your life. That's why he has blinded you from the truth. He doesn't want you to know about God or even to know about Christ. I urge you, encourage you, plead with you to turn because there is a last day. There is a last day. That last day is coming. And if you're not in Christ, it is eternal condemnation. There is hell. And then not even only is there hell, there is the lake of fire after that. It's all judgment for people that pushed Christ away and have refused to believe in Jesus. We must turn. We must turn to God. Tell the people to stop the wayward way of thinking and think the word. I believe this is a little bit targeted towards believers. Tell the people to stop the wayward way of thinking. What is the word? What does the word wayward mean? Stubborn, rebellious, intransigent. What else? It's just, you know, thinking, you know, thinking, thinking the wrong way, doing things the wrong way, not aligning with, with you know the right things or doing the right things that you're supposed to be doing and refusing to align and change you know so it says tell tell the tell the people to stop the wayward way of of thinking thinking your own way my way is the way your way is not the way oh. your way can't be the way jesus christ is the way and he wants you to think the way he says think the word think the way think the word Think the way of the word is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Think the way of the word. Think on Jesus. Think on Jesus. Think on Jesus. And stop trying to have your own way or trying to do things your own way, my own way. You know, all those, you know, demonic things and, and all those, you know, yoga and, and all those spirituality things. And, you know, you know God doesn't want you to. You know, put your hope in those things to relieve you or or to set you free. Those things only, if anything, put you in more and more bondage, you know. And God doesn't want, want you to do that. He wants you to keep your mind fixed on Jesus. He wants you to come to Christ and keep your mind fixed on Christ. And for every believer as well, he wants you, to, he wants you not to think of your own way of survival, but just to focus on Jesus in this time. Stop thinking of how you're going to protect yourself or save yourself. Just think on, meditate upon the word of God. Focus on G every day, every hour, every second. Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I have your peace. I have your love. I have your, just, just, just think on Jesus. Let Jesus just be at the center of everything. I am the light of the world. There is no darkness in me. They must live in me and I will show them the way. Again, everyone, believers, unbelievers, God is saying, I'm the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. I am the light of the world. I'm the light of the world. There's no darkness in me. You need to let this sit into you for like a second. Okay, I'm going to read it slowly. I am the light of the world. There is no darkness in me. Light, darkness. They must live in me. Light of the world. They must live in me. No darkness in me. I'm the light. They must live in me. They must live in the light. They must live in the light. And I will show them the way. There is no way it is dark everywhere and you're able to navigate yourself properly the way you're supposed to, to get to your final destination. Trust me, you're going to have some accidents. You're going to bump into some things. You're going to have trials and this and that and just, just so much like confusion, frustration, everything, you know, but if we have Jesus, we have the light. He's the true light, right? 
in the gospel of John, it talks about Jesus being the true light. He is indeed the true light. I'm the light of the world. There is no darkness in me. They must live in me and I will show them the way. If you live in Christ, if you live in God, he shows you the way to go. He shows you what to do. He shows you what to say, t tells you what to say. He literally just guides you. And there's a scripture in the book of Psalms. If you have a Bible in the book of Psalms, it says, Lord, let your light be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my part. I believe that's what it says. I'm calling it off my head. <laughs> okay. God's word is light. God is light. Christ is light. And when you become a believer, you become light as well. When you are in Christ, every darkness disappears. You're no longer part of darkness. You, you would be translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So everything becomes clear. You see things clearly. You know, you're able to function the way you should, move the way you should, and get to where you need to get to. Praise God. Do you know what I have done for these people? God is God was God was telling me this morning. God was telling me this morning. As I was meditating upon his word and just spending time in his in his love, in his presence, he was, he was telling me this morning, do you know what I have done for these people? Do you know what I've done for these people? Then he says, I have sustained their breath from the beginning and they have turned their backs on me. God is saying to me, he said to me, I have sustained their breath from the beginning. From the beginning, I have sustained their bread and they have turned their backs on me. They have turned their backs on me. Though I have sustained their bread from the beginning. I'm the reason they're living. I'm the reason they're breathing. I'm the reason I haven't taken them off the surface of this earth. I'm the reason they're still alive till now. I've sustained them. I've been there for them. But they think... They're sustaining themselves, but they think they're waking themselves up in the morning, but they think they're able to go to work every day by their own strength, but they think they're able to make the money that they make by their own strength, but they think they're able to use their brain, to use their mind, the way they do every day to make decisions and do things. But I am the one that has sustained them. I am the one that has put life in them. I am the one that has given them the ability to live the way they should and move the way they should. But they have turned their backs on me. Want them to turn back to me. Want them to turn back to me and I will redeem them, says the Lord. Want them to turn back to me. I'm wanting you to turn back to God. Because he has asked me to warn you to turn back to him. Turn back to God before it's too late. This was at about 4.16 a.m. this morning. Turn back to God before it's too late. God is warning you to turn back to him before it is too late. Turn back. Come back. He says in his word, I think somewhere in Zechariah, Return to me and I will return to you. This is what God wants for you. Return to me and I will return to you. When he knocks on the door of your heart, open up. He wants to transform you. He wants to change you. He wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to heal you. He wants to give you a new life. He wants to give you a new beginning. Open up. Open up to Jesus. Open up to the Holy Spirit. Open up to God. My life as it is today is completely different from what it was. Speaking of three, four, five years ago. God has changed me from inside out. God has transformed me. God is real. Wake up from your slumber. The time is short. Wake up from your slumber. The time is near. 
Praise God. Tell them if they do not change, their sins will be upon their children's children. Tell them if they do not change, their sins will be upon their children's children. The yoke and the burden will not be removed and I will destroy them on the last day. Lord have mercy. Each time I say that, each time I said that to God this, this morning, early in the morning, at about four, each time he spoke to me and gave me these words, I would say, Lord have mercy. And I would hear a voice say to me, I will not until they return to me. I will not until they return to me. I will not until they return to me. Tell them if they do not change, their sins will be upon their children's children. The yoke and the burden will not be removed and I will destroy them on the last day. The yoke and the burden will not be removed and I will destroy them on the last day. For however long this pandemic is going to go on for, we do not know. But the yoke and the burden of which it carries, falling sick and not being able to even go to the hospital, you have to stay at home, the burden of not being able to even go to the shops to do, to you know, buy, buy things. Just everything that is currently going on right now is a yoke and a burden. He says it will not be removed. 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 Unless you change, it will not be removed. God is not willing to make a change until there's a change in the world. God is not willing to remove COVID-19, coronavirus. God is not willing to take it away until people awaken. This is the time for your awakening. My brother, my sister, this is the time for your awakening. Wake up from your slumber. The Lord is waiting. The Lord is waiting. The Lord is waiting, people. The Lord is waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. Return to me and I will return to you. Return to me and I will return to you. Return to me and I will return to you. Thank you, Jesus. For my people have done two evil things. They have abandoned me, the fountain of living water. They have dug for themselves cracked cisterns that hold no water at all. He led me to um, somewhere in Jeremiah. I believe it was Jeremiah chapter 2. And he told me to tell you this. You've abandoned God and you've rejected him. And God is saying, why are you putting your hope in something that is helpless why are you putting your hope in the government why are you putting all your hope in what the government is saying and what the media is saying in what the in what the news in what they're telling you these people are lying to you the truth is out there but they're lying to you you can never know the truth until you come to christ you can never know what the real truth is until you come to jesus you can't know it don't reject God. Don't push God away. He loves you so much. So, so much. No matter how dirty you are, no matter how fallen you are, no matter how sick you are, no matter what it is you're going through, your addictions, your pains, your difficulties, your challenges, whatever it is, your hearts deep down in your soul, the abuse, whatever it is, whatever it is, what your family did to you, what that person did to you, what they said to you, no, no matter what it is, God is saying, don't reject me. Don't push me away because I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and I'm the end. Your peace is in me. Your joy, your redemption, your freedom is in me. Whatever you're going through right now, every bondage, whatever it is you're experiencing or have gone through, come to me and give me your burden. Come to me and give me every single one of it. And I'll make it light for you. I'll make things better for you. I love you. That's what God is saying to you. He, he loves us. That's why he gave Christ up for us. 
so that we can believe in something that is holy, that looks like us. And we become holy automatically. Believe in him. Confess him and what he's done. Praise God. He said to me, um, he he also took me to Jeremiah 2.17 and told me to tell you this. And you have brought this upon yourselves by rebelling against the Lord your God, even though he has been guiding you, directing you in all your paths, in all your ways. God is saying here, the world have um, pushed him away. The world has pushed him away. Right? We have rebelled against him. We've pushed him away. Even though he's been there with us from day one, guiding us, showing us the way, and, and just trying to put us on the right path. But, but we keep on rebelling. We keep on rejecting him. We keep on pushing him away. That's what he was saying. That we we have brought this upon ourselves. God is saying that the world has brought this, this pandemic upon itself. Right? Because we refuse to listen. Because we refuse to adhere to his word, to his instruction. Believe in Jesus. Accept Jesus. We refused. So now he's saying that the world has brought this upon itself. Your wickedness will bring its own punishment. That punishment is here and now in the form of coronavirus. That punishment is here and now. These are not my words. This is the word of the Lord. He just took me to Jeremiah because I sit down and I say to him, Lord, what, where, show me where in the Bible you want me to go to right now. Show me what is it you want to tell me right now. He either tells me or he show, or, or he takes me to a, to, a, to a specific book in the Bible. And today it was Jeremiah. And this was it. Your wickedness will bring its own punishment. You can see the punishment happening already in the, in the form of this virus. This, this um, pandemic that is currently you know, going on. And this is just the beginning. And the end will be death. But they will suffer in the hands of the authorities and I will destroy them. I could break that down in so many ways. They're going to be introducing some chips and just, just so much. They're going to be introducing so much in the future. And people are going to think, oh, wow, it's, oh, it's amazing. Yes, this, this, this and that. But you have no idea what you're actually taking upon yourself. Even the mark of the beast is going to be put on a lot of people very, very soon. Maybe in form of a chip or something. I have no idea. But the punishment that God is talking about has already begun. And if we don't turn, it's, it's just going to continue. A little bit now is happening. And then, things, and then things may go back to normal again. And then before you know it again, something is going to come. It's just like when he says that... Um, when you say that there's peace, all of a sudden, destruction comes, right? Ruin comes, yeah? This is what he's talking about. This is what he's talking about. That this is your payment for your wickedness, your evil ways. This is what he's talking about for your rebellion. This is what he's talking about. This is it right here. They will suffer in the hands of the authorities, like I've already said, and I will destroy them. Turn to God. This is the time more than ever because the authorities that you think are helping you and have your best interest at heart. No, 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 darlings. They don't. The only person that has your one true, honest, genuine best interest at heart is Jesus. You know why? Because he died for you. Because he died for you. He died for you. And this week being, being the week of resurrection, please just turn to Jesus because he's the way. You will see what evil, bitter thing it is to abandon the Lord your God and not to fear him. I, the Lord of heaven's armies, have spoken. And it says, your turning from me will shame you. Your turning from me will shame you. We must turn back to God that he will take away every shame and bring upon us his glory. 
We must turn. We must turn. We have to turn. The world is a corrupt world. Tell them to turn back and I will redeem them. The world is a corrupt world. Tell them to turn back and I will redeem them. He took me to, to um, Jeremiah 2.22. Jeremiah 2.22. He said here, no matter of soap or lie, L-Y-E. Um, he says no matter of soap or lie can make you clean. Lye is a chemical that is used in soaps, uh, disinfectants, antibacterials, and all those things to make surfaces, floors, toilets, or, you know, things just really, really clean. Or when you wash your hands to kill bacteria, okay? They put lye in products. Now, he has brought my attention to this today. In this time that all of this thing is going on, he says, no matter of soap, Lie can make you clean. I see your guilt. You are unprotected, unexempted until you return. You are unprotected and unexempted until you return. Antibacterial soaps and wipes are running out in the stores if you go to the shops you will barely find except they restock but from my own experience because whenever i go to the shop to get antibacterial wipes or when i check online go on amazon right now go online right now and tell me if you can find the tall wipes to to buy tell me if you can find them to buy they're finished except they've restocked them but for the past couple of weeks phew, everything's gone everything i mean everything is gone in this, what I've put down, what I'm telling you right now is God's word to you. Yeah? I'm so sorry that this video is really long today. I have to get this word out now. Jeremiah 2.22. I'm not making anything up. Take a Bible. Look for a Bible. A Bible is a book like any other book. Look for a Bible. Buy a Bible if you don't have a Bible. Right? The Bible carries the word of God. It is true. A lot of the events that have been recorded in the Bible have happened. And the rest of them are prophetic events that will happen in the future and are happening now in this time. No amount of it, of soap or lie, can make you clean. No matter. No matter, no amount at all. Even the whole thing, just pour it into your hand and wash your hand and scrub your head to your toe. God says that he still sees, sees you as guilty and that you're not clean. You, you, you must want to know, so, so what is going to acquit me? What is going to redeem me? What is going to, you know, make me innocent? And the answer is Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. You are not saved. You are not covered. You are exposed to that virus. If you are not under Jesus Christ, you are exposed to the virus. That's, that's coming from God in this time. Because he knows that, th that, that this coronavirus is going to come in this time. And people are going to be relying on antibacterial wipes and <laughs> antibacterial hand, hand wash and sanitizers. No, it's not. It's not. He said those things are not going to do it for you. It's not. Come to Jesus. Come to God. So I pray that you would take this word seriously, these warnings and these instructions, and turn to God because the time is short and God loves you so much and he doesn't want any soul to be lost. He doesn't want us to perish he wants us to be to be saved and to live the, the life that he's called us to live god loves you i pray that for any one of us that are already in christ that you continue to walk the walk of faith and continue to wait on god and continue to believe in him and trust in him and wait on him we must wait on the lord because we're covered already he has shielded us no harm and no evil can come near you. Do not allow fear into your heart. 
Fear is the enemy's bait to get you down. Don't allow fear. Live in faith. How do we live in faith? By focusing our attention, our eyes on Jesus. Let your focus be on fire now in this era. Do not be distracted by fear because that's what the enemy wants. It's a snare, right? So I pray that God will give you the strength and the courage to continue to live for him and bring him glory in all that you do in this time. Ask him, God, what is it that you want me to do in this time while I'm at home? Show me, show me the way, Father. Show me the way. Reveal to me what you want me to know and take out of this time, this season. What shall I be doing? Help me, Lord. And for every unbeliever, my prayer for you is that you will turn to Christ today and make that decision and be bold enough to accept Christ and live for him and come under his covering and his protection and his love. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to say this prayer with me. If you have not received Jesus Christ, you can close your eyes and say this prayer so that you're in focus. Lord Jesus, I come to you today because I believe now that you died for me. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you died to set me free. I believe that you were raised up on the third day to set me free from every oppression, every sickness, disease, sins, afflictions. Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. Have mercy on me. Wash me with your blood that I can be whiter than snow. Deliver me, heal me, and help me. I want to work for you and bring you glory in all of my ways. In Jesus' name, I declare that I am saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you said that prayer, welcome to God's family. You've done an amazing thing. What I want you to do is go ahead and try to get yourself a Bible. If you can't afford to get a Bible, send me an email. I will put the email address on the screen and also in the description bar. Please send me an email and send me your testimonies too. God is going to do some wonderful things in your life. Until next time, you all, God bless. See you.